Hey everyone, this is Joshua Kirk here with you once again. And now it's time for episode 82 of Album of the Day. Um, in which, uh, today's artist is, um, or an artist that I've never reviewed before. But I just decided to review today. That's a, um, a singer-songwriter and a guitarist who, um, uh, originally used to live in Nashville, but, um, has recently moved to an adopted home in uh, Spain. Um, uh, the artist's name that I'm talking about is uh, Josh Rouse, and uh, uh, he um, he's uh, put out you know uh, quite a few albums that have a sound that's uh, described as like you know a mix of like folk and uh, you know a mix of like folk and indie rock and, uh, you know, and, 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 and like, uh, folk pop and, you know, uh, a mix of styles, kind of like that. Um, so, um, I'm here to review his, uh, most recent album that came out last year, released on April 7th, 2015, on, uh, Yip Rock Records, so I'm mentioning them in here. Um, the album is called The Embers of Time. Um, so anyway, this is the CD copy of it that I got for Christmas recently. Um, and yeah, so, uh, you know, I'm basically, this is kind of a shout-out to Yep Rock, too, because as I said, the, the, this is one album that they put out in April last year. Um, anyway... Uh, it shows some of the credits and uh, some really some really nice artwork going on. It's like a collage of uh, different things uh, going on to, into a kind of odd, but at the same time, very beautiful piece of art. Uh, um, it's got a booklet in here which uh, has the lyrics and the personnel of who played what on every song. And yeah, that's my uh, CD copy of um, The Emperors of Time, uh, an album by uh, Josh Rouse. Um, so, um, this album, I think, you know, was one of the best written albums that I think I've heard in a pretty long time. You know, it took a few listens bef before I really understood what the album was trying to say, but, um, as of right now, I think it's a really great album, and really to show Josh Rouse's, like, songwriting skills. Um, uh, I first discovered this artist when Yep Rock sent me a copy of his last record that came out last year. Oh, not last year, uh, uh, that came out in 2013 called The Happiness Waltz. I thought it was a really great album, so I thought, you know, and then a few years I was curious about this new record, so that's kind of why I asked for it for Christmas in, uh, 2015. Uh, a lot of the lyrics come from, like, inspiration of, like, things Josh Rouse has dealt with in his real life. Uh, you know, it's not all made up. A lot of it's very believable, kind of like Bob Dylan. Uh, I like to think of, you know, Josh Rouse as, like, our generation, uh, of, like, as, like, you know, modern, is, is like, as, like, modern Bob Dylan or something like that. Uh, 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 like, and, uh, like, uh, so the inspiration for this came from basically struggles, you know, uh, you know, ba basically a lot of struggles and, uh, therapies that, like, Rouse had to go through, uh, and it's basically a record about, like, reflecting on, like, childhood and, you know, on, on like, adulthood and basically it's an album basically reflecting on life and, you know, basically the, you know, the embers of time, I think the title really does tie in to kind of, you know, kind of the theme of the record, uh, which, um, uh, theme of the record, 
which uh, the theme of the record is basically, you know, uh, a kind of a self-awareness and reflection kind of album. It's something I really connect to. So, um, uh, so anyway, and plus, uh, the, the instrumentation on here sounds really nice. Kind of like how it did on Happiness Waltz. Except, you know, both those records definitely have a different feel to them, so. So, um, anyway, let's, uh, and sorry for the noise in the background, it's my cats. Uh, uh, anyway, I'm just gonna, I'm kind of gonna break it down track by track. So I'm gonna start with the opening song on here. Some days I'm golden all night, which, um, yeah, basically, you know, kind of is a song that kind of reflects on, you know, you know, some days you're, you're golden, other days you're bad. Uh, but yeah, it kind of depends on, like, you know, uh, the weather outside or, like, if you've been drinking a lot or stuff like that. Obviously, uh, what gave Josh Rouse these feelings was that he, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. He he he's like been drinking. He's been like drinking a lot or stuff like that. Uh, and uh, and you know he talks about he reflects on how the last few years have been a struggle, and you know it's a beautifully written song and and the music and, and the music on that song I think is really beautiful as well. Has kind of a Glen Campbell like con country country politan kind of feel to it. Uh, with a mix of guitars and bass and drums, piano and vibes and uh, strings and uh, uh, slide guitar. Um, you know, really it's a beautiful song and I love how it opens the album uh, in such a way that it sort of gives you a clue about uh, the kind of record that you're in for. Right off the bat, you know, you're in for a very special album. And then you follow that with the song too many things on my mind, which, uh, once again, kind of reflects on, like, you know, you know, you know, uh, Josh Rose is, like, uh, hanging with friends, but he has a lot of good things going on in his life, but yet, like, he's, like, there are some, like, he's some, but then, but then he's also reflecting on, he's got too many things on his mind, not only because of that, but because of, like, you know, this is kind of a record, uh, the narrator of this record is pretty much, you know, kind of a drunk, sleepless, uh, obsessed man who, like, um, you know, has a lot of struggles going on with his life with, like, you know, family and, you know, uh, family and, like, you know, uh, family and, you know, uh, and self-independence and stuff like that. Um, and, uh, musically this song, you know, it's, it's a little more stripped down. It, just contains like guitar, harmonica, a bright bass, drums, vibes, and, uh, and a few Mellotron strings, as well as some Mellotron strings. Uh, but then there's also the unusual Latin-esque touch of some bongos in there too. Um, the third song on here is called New Young, and this song case basically was born out of a guitar riff that Josh Rouse written a long time ago, around like 2000-ish, and uh, someone had told him that he really liked that riff and, you know, suggested him to use it. So that's kind of how the song started out, with just that little riff Rouse had written a long time ago. Um, and, you know, it was kind of a song basically about, like, you know, traveling and, you know, making plans to, you know, move somewhere else when, uh, you know, life is, you know, just, you know, has a ton of ups and downs, and, and you're always kind of, I, I think it does kind of fit into the record this, in the sense that it does reflect on, like, you know, you know, you, you, you think about your family a lot, and, uh, you know, and, and, and you know, keep making, uh, plans to, uh, move to, move to the country, and, and, and you know, you're, you're kind of making, preparations for a life that you might not be quite used to. Um, so like the lyrics are, are really nicely written, but musically the song is elevated by the, uh, uh, elevated by the, uh, 60s pop-esque harmonies of, um, 
uh, K.O. Belvazer and Chema Fertis, and that really gorgeous, beautiful um, pedal steel performance from um, a Nashville musician whose name is uh, Fats Kaplan, who uh, you probably know best as right now he's a backing musician in uh, Jack White's backing band. Um, and uh, up next uh, is the uh, track You Walk Through That Door, which is the one song where uh, most of the instrumentation, other than like the guitar, the harmonica, and the bass, were uh, played by uh, 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 Chema Furtis. So this is the uh, one uh, song where he, um, Rouse kind of, you know, worked on this one with him solely. Because, uh, like, you know, his, you know, Chema, you know, played a lot of instruments on here from like the drums to the vibes to the piano to that, uh, to that amazing dobro solo that occurs in the middle, and it's just kind of a fun, you know, like marching band inspired, you know, tune. Um, and you know, and, and you know, it's a song that talks about, you know, getting a little me lonely down on a memory lane, uh, and you know, obviously the narrator d never knew what love was for, uh, and you're always trying to. He's trying to think back to where he was before when this, like, you know, uh, woman that he all of a sudden knew, like, uh, walked through the door and he tries to think back to when, you know, life was easy and carefree. Uh, and, and yeah, uh, just, you know, of, and, and yeah, just, uh, a very, yeah, 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 just a fun song. So, uh, fun song. And, uh, I like how it initially, like, it starts out with like an accordion and some some street samples, uh, and then it goes into the main tune, and then it goes back into like the accordion and street uh, sounds um, thing that occurred in the intro. It's almost kind of like uh, a short film with the uh, the, uh, the opening credits and ending credits. It's it's kind of innovative that way. Um, um, uh, then there's the song Time, which, uh, you know, is kind of a song reflecting on age a little bit. Uh, if you listen to the opening line, uh, early 40s, how are you doing? Uh, wh what's the deal? Um, and how am I supposed to look? How am I supposed to feel? Because time kind of keeps telling you, like, who to love and where to go. It's really a song about aging is definitely a kind of big part of this record you know, shows him maturing, you know, as a songwriter a little bit. Um, but as a songwriter and really developing skills. Um, and uh, this one has, like, contains mostly acoustic instrumentation. Uh, has this really nice uh, uh, Tarango melody that occurs in the chorus. Um, as well as uh, a bunch of other things that are used in the song. Like, a, like, like there's like a really nice pedal steel in it, um, and then there's like a use of a, an accordion, uh, and uh, accordion and uh, uh, stuff like that, uh, and uh, it has like, you know, kind of a vibe in the middle, has kind of some, some vibes in the middle. Uh, and yeah, uh, just, you know, uh, and you know, just, uh, the lyrics on that song are just, you know, so, uh, beautifully written, uh, and I, and, and I think, uh, uh, the melodies sound really nice from the record, and this album kind of shows that, and, and this song kind of shows that pretty well. Uh, the song Pheasant Feather, um, is, uh, like a he-she duet between, um, uh, Rouse and, uh, Jesse Balin. Um, yeah, yeah, we got 14 minutes, we're good. Um, anyway, back to the video, uh, and, uh, back to the song, um, uh, Pheasant Feather, which, uh, you know, it's kind of a he-she duet between, um, Rouse himself and, uh, Jesse Balin. And let me say, their voices go beautifully together on here. And I love how, you know, kind of 
you know, the uh, the he, which is Rouse, and the she, which is S which is Jesse Balin in this case, they both, you know, tell, it's kind of dealing with kind of a hard relationship, and they're both telling from each other's point of view, you know, uh, like, you know, like, a, like, like, like one side, you know, is glad to see that the other side is doing well, and all that stuff, and then the other side says, you know, I'm still in love, but it's different now, and they're both kind of asking themselves, are we bitter friends or jealous enemies, or uh, are we a pheasant feather on a wooden box? Uh, just, you know, really, you know, uh, you know, you know, nicely uh, written song, uh, uh, and uh, the, uh, and, uh, you know, but, like, the only thing better than, like, the the subject matter, the lyrics on this song, or how well the voices go together, are those string arrangements provided by Chris Carmichael on here. Uh, Chris Carmichael plays uh, the violin pretty notably on this song, and you know, you know, you know, just sounds you know really good on there with the uh, uh, with uh, Chema uh, Fertis creating this uh, melody out of a mandolin, a tarango, and a piano that all blend together pretty nicely on there. Uh, so, so yeah, it's definitely a very melodic record, too. Uh, and then you follow that with the pretty much the most bare-bones, stripped-down song in the whole record, Coat for a Pillow, which, um, you know, was kind of a song, you know, um, you know, you know, it's definitely a quieter song, it, you know, you know, does, you know, obviously, you know, uh, it's pretty much the thing, it's pretty much the kind of, you know, sad song that, that's like, that you would hear sung by a, uh, a very, um, so, uh, it's sung by a person that, uh, is obviously, you know, got too many things going on in his brain because, like, because, you know, you know, too many pills and, uh, us. Too many pills and too many songs for tomorrow. So um, you know, you know, you'll you'll you know, it is kind of a tired you know track a little bit, but um, but it's still a really beautiful song, and I I love that part at the end where they use the echo, which uh makes it sound as if you know, uh, uh Josh is like singing in like some sort of cave or tunnel or something like that, and then you got the fastest song on the album called J.R. Worried Blues, which, uh, this is, you know, yet again, you know, uh, uh, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, it's just a really just killer blues song with, uh, some, with, uh, some really nice harmonica on it, uh, and the bass line in it is great, um, and, and you know, it's kind of a song that, um, you know, it's, you know, you know it does reflect on kind of issues of the day, uh, you know, with, uh, t with, uh, the, with, uh, time in the present, you know, uh, with, like, you know, with, like, you know, wondering when, uh, we're, basically the narrator's wondering how is he gonna write another song when life is so busy, you know, with, like, getting up early in the morning, having a music career, and, you know, being a father and stuff like that. Uh, so, like, you know, if you're, if, if, if you're a parent, well, then you can kind of relate to the song because it does reflect on issues of the day, having to take your kids to school and all that stuff. Um, and then there's uh, probably my favorite song on the record would have to be the song "Expat Blues," uh, which uh, is a co-write between Rouse himself and the producer of this album, Brad Jones, who I think did a really killer job with the production on this album. Uh, uh, as, as he did with the Happiness Waltz. Um, and, uh, this is definitely, yet again, a pretty stripped-down song. But yet, there's a few elements that, you know, show that it doesn't need to be, uh, instrumentationally packed or anything like that. You know, you always kind of a song about, like, uh, you know, he's stuck inside this, uh, place where he doesn't want to be. And, uh, you know, just, and, uh, he's kind of a, you know, you know, when, when you're in a place where you don't want to be, where you feel uncomfortable, you, like, um, 
you feel like, um, you feel amazed that you told yourself, uh, you could stay in there and, uh, because you decided you got to go and you don't belong. Um, uh, another thing that I think is really good on here and well done besides the lyrics would have to be that string part played by Chris Carmichael on there. Just so beautiful and, you know, just, you know, so heavenly to listen to. And then it closes with kind of a fun barroom jam called Chris Crystal Falls, which uh, is a song kind of about Josh Rouse's childhood, how he used to live in uh, this little, you know, town in California that, uh, that, that had a pretty big lake, and it's just kind of a fun uh, song about, like, having very fond memories when you're a kid, but then, but then again, you know, it's just another stop and you never get to see it again. Uh, uh, but, but yeah, it's just kind of, you know, it's a very catchy song with, like, some, with, like, you know, some very, with, with some very, you know, plinky, uh, uh, with some very plinky, uh, honky-tonk piano, um, no, and it's got a little swagger to it with the hand percussion, there's, like, uh, like a guiro part on there, or stuff like that, um, and then it closes out with a pretty, with a slower, uh, sadder, uh, outro, which just contains, like, a guitar, some pump organ, and upright bass, uh, and Josh Rowe singing the last few lines, you know, singing about how if only he could get it right. Uh, so yeah. You know, it's not a very long album, it's only, like, about 33 minutes, uh, with, you know, most of the songs being, like, just a few minutes with the last song being the longest, nearly five minutes, because it's a mix of that three-minute song and then that outro. Um, but yeah, but for but for a pretty short album, you know, uh, it does so well. It makes a big impression uh, on me. So I'm definitely going to give this record like a, a 9 out of 10, because it really does show that uh, I think this is definitely uh, a very special album shows how gifted and talented Josh Rose is, so if you've never heard of him, well then this probably wouldn't be too bad of an introduction. Um, the Happiness Waltz is a really excellent album, so I do recommend that. That's how I first got into him. Uh, but yeah, this is a really good album as well, so um, uh, so, so like kudos to Yep Rock for putting out such a moving album last year. Uh, that, you know, I just, you know, that, that, that I really can relate to in a lot of different ways. So, this is my review of the album, The Embers of Time by Josh Rouse. Highly recommend you get a copy of this. See you for episode 83.